And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us straight from the land of Tambu, and, cre <laughs> and creators of the upcoming uh, Bloodsword adaptation to D&D 5th Edition, the one and only Danielle Fusetto. Hi, today, hi everyone. I'm doing very, very great. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is the second time, and I'm very happy. I'm very glad to return here. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like to I'd like to start off with the with the humble beginnings, um, yeah. in a sense. What, I'd like you to walk me through. I'd like you to walk me through first your um, first intro introduction to role playing games and how that and how that stick. I'm going to have a follow up for that, but I want to focus on that for now. Yeah, my my first introduction of, uh, of role in role playing games um, it was um, too many years ago, twenty years ago, twenty one, mm -hmm. and I was a little teenager and I started uh, playing D D D D third edition. It mm -hmm. Uh, it was just came uh, come out in Italy in, in in Italian, and we in Italy there is this kind of uh, custom for. I, I was born in I, in 1988, so I grew up in the 90s and mm -hmm. in the first part of 2000, and we had like one DM, and pretty much all the groups have one DM and people closing around those DM because they had the money and maybe they were a bit you know older than us they had the time and the knowledge to read the the, um, the end books and so i started playing and my first game was uh, as a dungeon master it was like something truly different at the time uh, most of the dm was like 17 years old uh, 18 years old i was 13 and my first my very first session, I was the DM, and it was so crazy fun that the group allowed me to continue doing the, G the, the DM, the, D the GM, um, instead of older uh, person. And it was so, so fun that I, I never stopped uh, GMing. Uh, just a little time when, you know, people grow up and your, your group is like, shuttering down because all the people is going on like I'm working, I need to set up my life, I'm in university. I never stop. I start DMing and then I start writing my own game. I also played a lot of game and here I am. <laughs> Although um would it be fair of me to say that you that you've teetered on teetered close to a forever DM? Well, for the first part of my role-playing life, yes. Uh, then I, I was like struck in the middle of the of the road with, with a, a game that I I will never forget, which is a Polish word by Vincent Baker, and it, it it suddenly changed my my perspective on on role-playing. I started playing more. I started also playing a lot of GMless uh, or GM GM fullness. Uh, game, as we call it in Italy, and so a lot of games that doesn't require a GM. And then I I restarted playing Dungeons and Dragons with the fifth edition. I really loved fifth edition, and now I'm like, whatever, whatever. So I, I can play today and DM tomorrow, and then write stuff the next day, and then another background on Thursday, and etc. Mm -hmm. uh, the COVID and um, uh, unfortunately, the, the COVID situation slowed me a bit um, because my group were, I I, um, I opened in, I think, five years ago, I opened a, an Italian format for role-play game, which is called um, Blind Date with a Tabletop RG. <laughs> and you, you go to a place and there are DMs or facilitators that has prepared for you a game, but you don't know what you will play until you sit down with them. And so I started this and we expected it to be a sort of local 
um, initiative, and then we widespread in 20 cities uh, all across Italy, and we are growing. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the COVID, unfortunately, slowed this up a bit, and so I, I started playing more online. I, I already played a lot online. I started to play even more, and then I, I had a bit of a slowdown, and then I'm restarting again to play a lot with Blazword and with other titles. Mm -hmm. Now, that of course segues segues nicely into Bloodsword. Now, this is, now um, Bloodsword is not it is not an IP that ca that came from scratch. This is a adaptation no. of a game book series that came out in the 80s yeah um, which is interesting to me because you meant you mentioned growing up in the 90s so yeah. how did you first come across um blood sword and were you were you an at were you an avid diver into um into game into game books around that time so uh, in italy the most famous series of all was lone wolf in the 80s and 90s, there, re there was a publisher in Italy that printed all the English version of Long Wolf. And I was reading a lot of Italian game books um, at the time. But there was one book in the, in the library of, my, of one of my DMs at that time. And he had this, this game book. And it was the only English game book uh, of all his library. And it went like, um, I, I cannot read so much English, so I tried it once and then I put it down. So if you want, you can have it. And it was Battle Pist of Prat. It was the first Blazword series. I, I, um, to the truth, the first time I read it, I, never, I, I didn't understand anything because I didn't know English very well. But then I started playing Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons and I started reading in English because a lot of things missed Italy. So um, we, I played a lot of Magic the Gathering, for example, in English because a lot of cards weren't... You know, there was like three months, four months until they can, we, we can get in Italy that type of cards. And so it helps me understand a bit better English and then I retried the game book and then I lost it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, the DM re retrieved it from my, my own library and I never saw that book again until 2014 my best friend Eduardo, which is um, a great uh, game designer, uh, is the author of uh, Little Skatity Party mm -hmm. and is a great fan of Bloodsword, and I remember something, and he reintroduced me to to this book because Librarsi, which is an Italian editor, get the right for the original game books, and he started reprint them in the new edition, uh, the same one of the English Kickstarter by De Morris, and so I restarted reading them, and I was like, oh my god, but I I really read them. I didn't remember that th that at the time. I, like I was like, mm, this is less, it's quite familiar. Uh, there there were some crossroads, some some you know some points of the game book that was really something that I remember from my past, and I, I struggled a bit for to, to know where what it came from. And then I remember that English book that I the, the cover was different, the editor was different. And also some tra some words in Italian were translated differently. Mm -hmm. And I remember it, and I was like, oh my god, this is that book. Uh, the book that I, I'm always dying playing it, uh, even today. I think I end the first book of the series just once. And then I, I retried it very, very much. I, I, I played it like once a year, and every time mm -hmm. I, I die. <laughs> it's very hard for me to, to finish it, and that's it. Yeah. Now, one of the key one of the key things that seems to differentiate Bloodsword from other game from other um, game books that is me that's mentioned is the fact that, unless I'm mistaken, Bloodsword was one that could what was a rare case of a game book that could be played um, single player or played multiplayer, kind of like a tabletop game was. Was that yes. the reasoning why you why you guys decided to try and adapt Bloodsword into a full-on 
um, campaign setting for D and D. Yeah. Uh, so, Blast War was the first game book uh, in history to have the possibility to um, to be played in uh, in single player or in multiple player. And the idea was at first to adapt it in a tabletop role playing game, and we we thought a bit about what to do, and we we understand something in the first in the early stage of playtesting that the rules of Blast World, the original rules of Blast World, were in some way something that D D for fifth edition missed. For example, there is the action of uh, escaping the combat, escaping the fight, which in fifth edition is something that I, I as a, as a DM, really missed in my session. Sometimes, the my group was like, I want to flee, I want to escape this monster because it's too powerful. And it was like, I know there are some indication, some guidelines in in the, in the DM and book, but there is nothing very concrete, and so we understood that. We, we want to mix the two of them, 5th edition and Blast World, mm -hmm. and we end up by adapting the 5th edition to Blast World and not vice versa. We really kept a lot of things from the original Blast World and put them in 5th edition in a way that was a sort of um, respectful way to be in that type of world again, the, type, the, the world of Blast World, but at the same time, making some changes, some adaptation, some update. We speak with uh, Dave Morris, the author of the original game books. He, he loved our, our take on Blast World. And, and that was it. Uh, we, we knew that the, the tone and the setting, we, we tried to be a little bit more green dark. The game, the original game book is very fantasy green dark, but in, in, in fifth edition, we really put an extra effort on the on the green dark uh, part. We try to adapt the the series to fifth edition in order to be played in two ways. You can use the handbook, the Blast World handbook, and the adventure in it as a campaign setting um, with a sort of you know branch narrative, very a very mixed way of playing, like not too much reward, not too much open a sandbox open world. Is a mix of them both. Is a branch narrative like the one of, of the video games, but you can also set your own adventure in the world of legend and explore the world um, in any way you want. So you can do a bit of a, a bit more of some some boxing. You can put your own ideas and your own uh, adventure uh, concept in the world of um, of Blast World and. There was nothing so green dark and so, you know, berserk style, if I'm allowed to, to make this comparison. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was like a good idea. And I think that the Kickstarter is going very well. So <laughs> I think it was the right idea at the end of it. Now, I want to touch on the grim dark aspect. Yeah. Now, Grimdark as a concept can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different yeah. people, depending on who depending on who you ask and what they're doing with the concept. Yeah. What is what constitutes Grimdark to you, and how have you attempted to reflect that within um, within Bloodsword? So first of all, one uh, explanation: I am the co-writer of Blood Sword. I'm uh, dealing most of the time with the rules. I'm also um, working and helping with the tone and the setting, but the real uh, genius mind behind the setting adaptation is Valentino Sergi, mm -hmm. uh, the other author, which yeah, which mm, he started uh, thinking about Blast World and trying to understand how to to recreate the atmosphere. And uh, it was listening to me talking about rules and talking about how was I was. Mm, uh, talking about uh, how I can adapt the rules of Blast World to 5th edition, how we could maybe make some glitches, some changes, but at the end taking the same idea, the same rule idea, and just making one extra element, which is the blood dye, to resemble 
the sensation of the of people that are lurking into the game book and uh, if you play the game book you know it anytime you turn the page you don't know what to expect sometimes you fear what's expecting you sometimes you are excited to know what's behind the page and it was like oh i understand something and it, it, it started to you know to work on the setting and it came out with a green dark work that some people in Italy also called a green dark fantasy punk word is a is a word in which um, people are under the influence. All the reigns of this medieval land is under the influence of a new empire, the new Salentine Empire, which is a sort of uh, you know new empire like the one after the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. and it's in the south of the, the of the land of legends, like in the old game books. And it was like, what if this empire gave a mandate to all the kingdom in the north and make make a path with them? Like, you can rule your own land. You're, you need just to align with the empire and um, make a sort of, uh, you know, pact with us to never attack us. Mm -hmm. And you can have your own land and rule the land as you wish. And he created the, the, the concept of the ruling knights, which is new to the to the EP, to the to the setting. Mm -hmm. And this brings a sort of vi more violent, more amoral setting than the game book. They had this element, but it was like a sort of subplot element. Mm -hmm. In this kind in this version, is like very much in the in the first point of the setting. You know that, the, that this world is violent. It's very immoral. It's very not bipolar. There is no concept like pure good and pure evil. There is mm -hmm. also a sort of grayness inside it. And we also made um, an, a, an update on the on the characters. They are no more adventurers like in the old game books. They are not just adventurers. They are intrepid ones. Mm -hmm. They are the mercenaries and the um, the expendables that ruling knights can uh, ask to take missions which are most of the time suicidal mission or maybe mission that they don't want people to know they they want this type of mission spy mission assess assassinations uh, something like that mm -hmm. so he created a, a sort of you know uh, if you take the, the 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 world of corporations and guilds and um, you know, uh, noir elements from the cyberpunk and you bring them into the fantasy with a lot more, more violence. I think this is the, the, the green dark of Blood's World. It's a very, um, it's, a, it's a world of treason. It's a world in which anyone can manifest powers and maybe powers that you you you... You didn't know they had this power. So there is a lot of spying, there is a lot of shadows, a lot of you don't know what is going on. And at the same time, there is just one small hope, which is the blast world itself, and a very huge villain, which are the true magi, the true magi, sort of, you know, old uh, wizard uh, spirits that became, uh, that died in, in a cataclysm, in, in a devastation that is called the blasting of spite. And they become a sort of, um, um, I don't know how to say it in English, maybe I can use the word great ancient mm -hmm. uh, gods, like in the Lovecraft series, uh, in the Lovecraft world. Mm -hmm. And so there is this huge element of, um, of the, the great enemy that cannot be, um, cannot be beaten. You, you cannot beat it. You cannot beat the true Magi, mm -hmm. except with the blast word. It's the only artifact, the only magical object that you can use to to deal with them. And it's like a legend for the people. It's like a legend for the intrepid ones. This creates a sort of environment which is very realistic, very grim, very... It's not heroic at all. So it's like the opposite of heroism in the heroic fantasy. Now, with that kind of thing in mind, I'd, I would like to pivot into 
the into the um, whole thing with the blood dye. Um, yeah. Since that's de that's definitely something that you're adding to the sandbox. Um, yeah. First off, was is the blood dye an adaptation of a mechanic that was in the original game books, or is this something that's brand spanking new from you guys? So a bit of both. We 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 thought about how we can use how we, how we can transport the um, the sensation of the dye of the dice that the, the original game books use, which are the D6, the six-sided dice in DD 5th edition. And, you know, DD 5th edition use all the type of dice, but we couldn't uh, find a way to make the D6 a sort of protagonist in, in the mechanics. And we understood that we could link the die not to the mechanics of the original game books, but to the dynamic of, you know, the diving in into the story of the of game books. So as I said before, the sensation that anytime you are turning the page, you can accept something very good or very bad. You can, as a player, be excited or fear what's behind the page based on the context in which you have. I remember playing this, this game when I was a teenager and in adult life. And I, Blastword uh, is, um, in, in a, in, I think, is even worse in Blastword than in the Lone Wolf series. You can go from too deep excitement into the deepest black fear of what's behind the page. And so, I thought about it and I said, what if the die is not a D6 die? The die itself has no number. It has three sides with the blast word and three sides with the, with the blast word broken. And it's not a die that you roll anytime. You roll mm -hmm. only when the system allows you or when the system force you to roll the die. And when the blood as word is on uh, the result, your character is audacious. The, your character is exalted, like like the player itself. And when the die become the broken as war, which is the shiver, the character and the um, and the player feel the fear of this setting, and willing these mechanics to to basic mechanics of the 5th edition, which are the critical hit and the rest. Mm. So you have the blood dice, you start with the blood dice on the audacious status, it's not a condition, it's a status. And if you are audacious, your critical hit allows you to recover one hit dice of hit points mm -hmm. and allows you to rest in half the time, because in Blast World there is no sh short rest. It's a green dark world, so you cannot take the breath for five minutes or 10 minutes. There is a lot of time you are also in lands with huge dangers and very frequent dangers. And so there is no room for resting very peacefully. And so you have the long rest, but if you are audacious, you rest in four hours instead of eight. But during the, the session, maybe one of your friends is dying and you reroll the blood dye and you are shivering or maybe an enemy does one particular ability or magical feature that force you to roll the die and you become shivering. And when you are shivering, the critical hit of the enemy has an extra effect. And when you're resting, you you have an, an, an easy rest. Mm -hmm. You are forced to have a disadvantage of eating. Uh, you, you do not heal all your HP. And it becomes like like a sort of survivalistic element that is very connected with all the mechanics of 5th edition, also to the fight, for example, and gives you an extra layer of atmosphere, of mood. It, it helps also the DM, which is called Great Master in uh, Blast World, mm -hmm. which is uh, the name of, um, of a type of mage, of wizard, of enchantment, enchanter, sorry, in, uh, in the game book series. And when you roll a check, an ability check, or maybe an attack, 
based on the status that you have, Audacious, Audacity, and Shiver, that the, the GM can alter or, or in some sort of way as information, additional information to depict what you did and how you did. So if you try to move very stealthy in a situation and you are audacious, the description is different than if you are shivering. Mm -hmm. The DM can allow himself or herself to give the player extra details and depict the real mood of the game. Now, given the fact that the that the blood die is treat is is um, depicted as a custom die, custom die are all are often a very scub um, topic. Um, <laughs> some people are for some people are for it, some people are against it, but both sides have very strong opinions on their reasoning. However, for those who aren't willing to to uh, set it to get the, to get this specific kind of dice for the specific um, set of rules. Do you plan? Do you plan on having a ch a chart about a chart so 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 somebody could use just a just a different colored d6 as a substitute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have planned um, a sort of tips that he, uh, it's not just because I really know players that with. Um, that have problems or maybe that don't like custom dice. And I know a lot of players that really love custom die. And I was like, I I want to to let player and let the group decide how to replicate the the, the blood die without having the blood die. And so you can use the D6 and you can have the one, the two and the three as a shiver and the four, the five, the six, and the five as a audacious, or maybe you can make the even number out as are audacious, the odds number are shiver. Uh, you can also use a different die if you want, but the probability of the die and the sensation will be different. Mm -hmm. And so we insert in the handbook um, a sort of you know tips. It's not like I'm forcing you to use one alternative way. I give you several alternatives and you can choose the alternative that you you are more familiar with or that you prefer. And you can also use a, a coin. We tried the coin in the playtest like the, the, the head would be the audacious and the, um, the tail would be the, the shiver. However, it seems it seems it seem to us a little bit more too, too randomic, for example. Mm -hmm. And I made um, a box in the, in the handbook with all these tips, and you can choose yourself what is the best way to replicate the blood dye. Mm -hmm. Now, the next the next thing that next thing that I was um, that I was curious about is the is the is the concept of fears, which um. Seems to seems. Would it be fair of me to say that fear is kind of replacing the the um, flaw part of character yeah. creation, or is that not the case? No, no. Yeah, it's uh, is that is very very much that we. You know the problem with the the flow in in the background. First of all, the background of uh, of Bloodsworn Fifth Edition are a, a bit a little bit stronger than the background of Fifth Edition. Um, from the SRD, and so we try to adapt the background and also insert in the background the, the guild mm -hmm. um, based on the, the character uh, class that you choose and the guild in which you were as an intrepid. The background is different because the guild has so much power on the intrepid one that really much shapes your entire teenage years, your entire early years and so people in the same guild will have been through the same time type of experiences and at the same time the problem with the, the flows is that when we try them we understood that the characters the main characters the intrepid ones in blast world has have too many flows they are anti-heroes so they have really too many flows and so Instead of putting inside the, the background the flows, which are too much, 
really, really a lot of flows. We put something that they that they had, but they tried to hide because they need to to put a mask on themselves. They need to to show nothing except strength, except um, you know. Um, uh, they, they need to, to show the world that they are entrapped in the very sense of the world. And so they hide the fear and they always has one, maybe two fears, which are really deep inside the, the character. And sometimes these fears are from experience that you had during the, the, um, the time of the training, but also during your first missions. So one thing that we kept from the old game book is that characters in Blast World of the first level are not like in fifth edition new heroes, are not like um, you know, newbie of the world. They already had some experience which is covered by the background. So making the background a little bit stronger allowed us to, to say to the player, you know, during those years, you already make, made some missions and you already have some scars. From those experiences, you, you have also fears. And when a fear gets you, if you're shivering, it's really get, it really gets you. In the original game book, there is a mechanic that we adapted in a very different way, which is called Psych Points or Psych. Mm -hmm. And we try to recreate the, the, the old concept of the Psych and the broken Psych of the, of the Intrepid One. Fear, shiver, uh, monsters, the, mag the magic itself can really break the, the mind of the, uh, of the intrepid ones. And it's the only problem, the, the, probably the only element which is probably a little bit far away from, from the green dark aspect or from the green dark itself. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very fine to say that it's, it's getting along with the setting. It's very, uh, you know, um, linked to the setting, linked to the, the atmosphere. You have these wonderful and so powerful heroes that inside them, as co they know they committed a lot of crimes as well, and they have one or two deep fear that sometimes during the night, but during the night, chase them and make them return a child again. And so you need to be very aware. Um, also about the strategy of the of the pack, of the group of intrepid ones, where to explore, when to explore dungeons, when to fight other monsters, when to enter a cursed temple. You cannot do it like, you know, like in heroic fantasy. You can do typical dungeon crawling like, you know, Leroy Jenkins, I entered the dungeon whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in with that in mind, the next thing that I'd like to I'd like to delve a little bit into is is some of the play some of the player facing additions that that are being that are being added to the sandbox. Yeah. Because if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, you, there are um there are a few new there are a few new um classes and a few new subclasses. That are going to that are going to be in. I'd like to start in with the four new subclasses that you're get, that um you're put you're putting in and and what they what they would be similar and different to. Yeah. So, I'll start um, with the warrior. So the warrior is like a fighter, but we 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 developed uh, the the character classes from the original game book. The original game book has had four classes. The warrior, the sage, the trickster, and the enchanter. The enchanter was translated in Italian with the word stregone, which is more similar to sorcerer than enchanter. Mm -hmm. So in fifth edition, we stick to these four names, warrior, sage, trickster, and sorcerer. So they, uh, they have the same basic element of fifth edition the, the warrior is a fighter so he's very good with weapons and you know physical fight the sage is a sort of fusion between a monk and a healer they can fight without uh, without weapon or maybe with um 
uh, quarter staff, or sometimes even with a uh, bow, there is in the old game book, there is a talent which is called archery mm -hmm. that allowed the sage to be a sort of, you know, acrobatic archer, acrobatic bow, bow person. If you, if, if I'm, if I'm explaining myself, uh, well, sorry for my, my English, sometimes it's very difficult to talk. In English. No, wor no worries. I know, I know people that have a hard time speaking in my own, nat in my own mother tongue. So, oh. <laughs> And so the warrior is very much like the fighter. The only thing that we added was optional features. You can make your character ours with the feature of the fighter of 5th edition, or you can take all the alternative feature of the fighter, which is called the warrior in Blast World. Mm -hmm. The same for the sage, which is the monk for us. The same with the trickster, which is the, our version of the thief. And the same with the sorcerer, which is which has a new uh, sorcerer's origin, which is the psychic origin, which I think it it's not it's it's never been done in fifth edition. Probably, I'm not sure about that. They tr they I remember that they tried in that in that one um, on Earth Arcana where they where they tried to bring in psychics by making them a bunch of subclasses. It mm. um it wasn't received very well. Very well. Because because <laughs> they because they tried to they tried to claim that a scion is just a wizard casting spells with its mind. It uh. did, it um it did not go over well. <laughs> yeah. It went over yeah. as well as farting in a church. Yeah. Um I I can totally understand. And um so we we try to to be very um very um coherent with the original game book uh, and at the same time adding new things for example a lot of the feature that you see in the quick starter uh, which uh, has the four classes first level mm -hmm. are all adaptation of the feature of the class of the original game book so the um, probably the warrior is the one that is uh, different from from the original game book because the war in the original game book had all the you know, additional damages and probably some proficiency in um, in additional weapon, but nothing nothing else. And so we we added some uh, some alternative feature. And if you choose to follow the alternative path of the class of Blood Sword, a lot of features relies upon re-rolling the blood die or counting the number of character in your group. Which is called pack. Mm -hmm. The number of character that has the audacious status. So the the more people you have in the pack with audacious, the more the feature is very helpful for you. Which these are the basic classes. So the warrior has. Uh, we 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 want to be um, doing all the twenty level because in Blast World they, you know, characters tend to die very young. And there is nobody so powerful as upon the eighth, tenth level. So we will make the all the classes from the first level to the eighth, or maybe to the tenth. But the the archetypes uh, in Blast War will have additional feature uh, different from the fifth edition. So, for example, we unlocked with the Kickstarter the Bardic College of Arpist. Mm -hmm that will have one additional feature instead of the feature that you had in 5th edition. If I'm not mistaken, at the 10th level you had, I think, two or three um, archetype feature. We will, we will have one more. And so archetypes will be more powerful because we want, we want people to have the ability to use the, the classic Char uh, cl character class from DD 5th edition, mm -hmm. but at the same time with new um, archetypes. So if you want to play Blastword without relearning all DD 5th edition, you can stick with the class of 5th edition and just take the archetype of Blastword. If you want a new experience, you can take the full class of Blastword, but we will have only Warrior, Trickster, Sage, and sorcerer.
for the other classes, we will have only new archetypes and not new feature, not new class features. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the key things whenever someone is making a um, gr a very grimdark, very swords and sorcery kind of setting is to make it clear that magic is a very dangerous um, yeah. occupational hazard. Um, yeah. <laughs> with, well... With, and that that brings me to the rough magic um, rule that you that you guys have set up. I'd like you to go into how how that um, works and how that came to be in order to reflect the um, grim dark nature of the setting. So we we took that rule directly from the game book. In the game book, the sorcerer cannot cast a spell in the same turn uh, in which they. Uh, recall the spell to mind. They have to call the spell to mind and then cast it. So we thought a, a bit at the, at the early stages to take the same thing in 5th edition, but it didn't work very well. And so we changed it a bit. You can uh, use the magic as in 5th edition, so cantrips work the same of 5th edition, but from the first level of the spell until the ninth level, um, maybe the, the sixth level, we, we will not have ninth level spells mm. um you need to call them to mind if you don't call them to mind you can cast them but if they if them fail so if you have a spell with an uh, um, an attack you you need to perform and it fails or if the spell has a dc uh, a saving throw that the the target must succeed and they succeed casting that spell again Will have you have disadvantage to the roll, or or will give the enemy, the target, advantage to the saving throw. Um, this allows the magic to be less powerful and very problematic because uh, when you fail the magic, you also reroll the blood die. Mm -hmm. And so if you reroll the blood die and you became shivering, it's even worse because you know. You are shivering, and the, the GM can make all the, mm, the 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 explanation about why you failed. Like you remember maybe an experience that you had when you was were a teenager, when your character was a teenager, or maybe there were there is something in the monster that really gets you in the in your psyche, in your subconscious. Mm, this reflects also on the way that scrolls are used in the blast world. There, are, there is this new type of scroll, which is called Ancient Scroll. Um, Ancient Scroll can be used by any type of character, any type of class. You don't need to have the spellcasting feature to use them. Mm -hmm. But if you use them and they fail, you suffer forced damages, uh, 1d6 per level of the spell. So. I'm I'm willing to allow all characters to use this, this scroll because it was like this in in Blast World game books. Mm -hmm. All all characters can, could use the the scroll, but if you fail, the the spell is casted, but you suffer force the mages. And this is much for now how magic uh, rough magic works. But I need to uh, to to say something about this. I, we are still playtesting it. And we have some new idea. I, I cannot share them with you, but we are trying to adapt it in a way that some player came to us and said to us, I really love uh, Rough Magic, but for me, I, I, I'm true, it, it's not invented. For me, it should be even more punished. There, there, there should be even more punishment for Sorcerer and for spell, Spellcaster. And so we are trying to add some different element to punish casters because it's the way blast world works mm -hmm. and we are also trying to take um, a new way of rough magic to allow player to use the magic and at the same time fear the punishment um because the play tester were, was very good but there are some elements that we want to change and to, we want to improve in magics in blast world mm -hmm. now with now um within the within that um particular setup one one um 
one of the archetypes that's, ta that's talked about that I was a bit curious about, because it, it gives me ideas in my head, is the labyrinth path for the um, barbarian. Yeah. Um, so this is very linked to the, to the story of the first game book. We will adapt the, the storyline of the game book in the um, setting adventure of the um, of the end book of Blast World. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be um, slightly different from the story of the game book, so you can play the game books without spoiling anything. Which is th there are something that is uh, similar and something that is different, and also we will cut something out because the, the game books are you know hundreds and hundreds of pages. But one thing that we I really love about Battle Pit of Cards, the first, um, the very first uh, story, is that um, th there is this tournament that is doing going on in Cards every thirteen lunar month. The the true the Cards Magi, which are the descendant of the true Magi, mm -hmm. and are like the the villain, the concrete villain, the physical villain of the of Blood War, they make a tournament to decide which Krat Magi will rule for the next 13 months. They all choose several champions to enter the battle pit of Krat and to, uh, you know, re recover the emblem of victory and retrieve it and bring it to the surface. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of dungeons similar to the battle pit of Krat in the Land of Legends. And sometimes barbarians in Bloodsword and in the Land of Legend are not like really connected to the the wild uh, and the wildness and the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Are more connected to like being mercenary, very physical, very strong mercenary, and be the champions of the craft ma magi, or maybe be explorer and you know accompany or be together with the trapped ones inside dungeons. So. For us, it was like very simple to say, well, the barbarian here needs to have a path that is linked not in, to the wild and to the, you know, the rage upon totemic elements, but upon the idea that you want to succeed and to beat the labyrinth, which is the is a sort of metaphor, is the loss of reason, is the rage that forces you into confusion into chaos the, the labyrinth really has a strong um affect on barbarian um you can encounter barbarian in the first game book of the series as an enemy mm -hmm. there will would, in the in the game book series you 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 couldn't be a barbarian as a class but we um we added it because we thought it was uh, a really good addition to the Intrepid Ones and to the guide. Um, you know, a physical war, a very physical war, based on rage, based on the rage, and the source of that rage is what the the the, um, the character, the barbarian, had to you know to face during the teenage year, which mm -hmm. in, in the land of legend, growing up is like it's an adventure itself. And so it was like very, very simple to think about the, um, the labyrinth part, the part of the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Now, when I looked at the character sheets um, provided in the quick start, one thing that was, that, was that was presented within them that I was curious about is heroic ability. Um, yeah. How, what's that all about and how does that work? So, uh, erectability is a mechanic that uh, I usually, uh, I sometimes use in all my adaptation for 5th edition, uh, which is a sort of trick that for me is very useful to allow players to have the experience of a new rule without being, without have a new ability. So, the, sometimes you, f you have a new game, for example, Adventures of Middle Earth, I'm a very huge fan of that game, and you have a new ability um, to cover some part of the setting that the other ability couldn't cover. And that's fine, but you know, player has to face a new ability and some new skills and maybe some new mechanics and is very much 
it, it's too much, I think, for some players to deal with. Heroic ability is a sort of trick. It's a way to have a new mechanic and at the same time not having a new ability. So when you make the character in uh, Blast World, at the very beginning of the character creation, when you have chosen your class, you choose one ability between two. So each class allows you to choose not between all six abilities, but between two. For example, the trickster chooses from dexterity and intelligence. Mm -hmm. That ability is the heroic, um, heroic ability, is the right characteristic that you have. And the heroic characteristics cover all the seven throws of escaping, of fear, and of any mechanics linked to, you know, to being heroic in a, in a, er, in a land of grim dark and anti-heroic element. So anytime we want to test the morality of the, of the character, we rely on the heroic ability and the heroic ability modifier. And so it's very easy for me to write rules and say to you, in a feature, for example, you make a saving throw on your heroic ability. And I don't need to, to say to you, any time is different if you are a trickster is the certainty because you are you have the heroic ability written on the character sheet. And this is really a smooth way for me to, you know, to make player be uh, able to understand the rules and the new feature without being constricted by doing the same things again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Now, how... What are you shooting for as far as a page count when it comes to Blood Sword? Oh, this is a very tough question because I am the, the, the mind behind the rules, but the mind behind the book and the setting is Valentino and also Davide from Tambu, which is the publisher. I hope to have um, a very, um, you know, um, strong book. I think about 200, 250 pages. If we will have the ability to go farther, maybe 300 pages, it will be very, very awesome. But we, for now, we are stick to 250 pages, so mm -hmm. approximately. Um, with the the over description of the land of the land of legend, with the four classes and two archetypes for each classes, with a new additional archetypes for all the other fifth edition classes and there will be some mm, new fits uh, some new magical items uh, some new setting rules for example we will add in the handbook the virtues that will substitute all the background so the background will all only have virtues and fears and we will have psychic exhaustions and the new rules for rough magic and a lot of things some i think also some monsters because the rule, the the additional rule for uh, Blast World are not so deep and so long to get in a book, and you can rely on the classic rule of fifth edition, and at the same time have a new experience. For so, we we take all the fifth edition base of the rule, and mm -hmm. then we add something new that gives you a new experience without you know changing so much. Of the basic system of fifth edition. All right, I can I can certainly get behind I can certainly get behind that. And what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? Not a release date, but just a general um, ballpark. Well, um, it's very hard for me to say. Uh, I think that um, the estimate delivery uh, for now is uh, I think is April or May two thousand twenty two. So next year in April, in the, the spring, I think that we are sticking to that. There is no trouble ahead um, for the rules. We are playtesting them. We have uh, an amazing playtest group in Italy. And if you want to playtest the rule, you can write us at Tambu and we can add you to the list of uh, playtesters. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, we will publish the, the book and release the book and ship them in April of the next year, or maybe May, maybe a, a month late. But I think we have all the, the possibility to ship it in time. All right. And I'll, I'll certainly be keeping a close eye on how, how things develop with it. 
as as it gets closer and closer to it to its inev- to its inevitable um, release. And yeah. As an aside, I do I would like to offer my congratulations since you guys had set up a goal of ten thousand euro, and at the time of this recording, you guys are at thirty point two thousand. Yeah, we are really really satisfied with the um, success of this setting, and we are also really satisfied that the original author, Dave, Dave Morris, is very much into this operation. He, he gave us um, additional notes that he, he had on the original game books, alternative endings for the fifth book and for other things. And it was incredible, useful. He was very, very kind with us. I was so humble to be able to DM, uh, GM him in a session of of Blazworld and really loved our take and uh, you know when when you are adapting an EP uh, I think that all game design can agree and for me this is it I think that we want the original author to be satisfied and to say they really get the idea they really understood what my world was and Dave was very excited about Blast War 5th Edition. I'm very pleased by that. And like I said, I'll cer- I'll s- I'll certainly be looking forward to how you get to how it develops. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way come all the way to the show and brave the hell of time zones to enjoy the madness at play here. <laughs> it was my very very pleasure. And. Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come on to the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present... My name is Mildra, I am your gimming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!